Business owners are cursed with the challenge of bringing in more cash flow, but is it the right cash flow? Is it the right customers that deliver profitability? Well, today's conversation is just that. We've got someone that's bringing in £30,000 worth of revenue a month. It's not really profitable because he's not choosing the right bleeding customers. So if that sounds like a story that you're familiar with, you're going to like this conversation. Take a watch. Hello, campers. Welcome back to the Business Broadcast. Uh, more of you are watching and listening than ever before, mainly because I think there's two of us now. Me, James Sinclair, and you, James Burr, lovely known, as affectionately known, sorry, as JB. Yes. Hello, everybody. Do you think that's why people are tuning in? Because there's two of us. Well, people don't like the format. There's the, the, we've still got some haters that we prefer have. the old format, but more and more people are coming around to it. I have, I have confirmed and closed my first client who actually yeah. proactively disliked me and oh, i've turned him around there you go <laughs> maybe more people are going to like you now because you sound like barry white i know what's happened to your voice uh i was up late last night oh. watching tv i don't go to bed after 10 o'clock and this is what happens if i do now i can't do it anymore tell us why you was up late last <laughs> night watching tv well there's oh what's this hang on a second for those who are <laughs> no, those who are just, watching on youtube chad has just put a present in um well, come wow, we. I want to know why you was up late last night because everyone's because we might forget to say that. We might then. forget. Yeah. So one of our podcast clients, yeah, he came to me. I've never had this before. I always ask people, "What does podcast success look like with this show? What are you trying to do?" Yeah. And this one guy went, "I want to get, go on either the Jungle or in Celebrity Big Brother," and I laughed, and he didn't, and I realised at that moment in time he was serious. And last night at nine o'clock, Gary Goldsmith. Yeah, the uncle of uh, Kate Middleton, who's got links to you, obviously, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, went into the celebrity well, Big Brother say, house. Kate Middleton hasn't got links to me. I'm not like having a secret affair. <laughs> the future Queen of England. <laughs> no, but through f- f- familial, familial, well, f- I know family her mum. Yeah, you I know her mum bought her mum's business. Yeah. Um, yes. So we we work with Gary Goldsmith, and he went into Celebrity Big Brother, which is actually um, Carol's brother. Brother. Yes, that is. So he's. What by the time he- this comes out, he would have. He'll be out. Well, I've actually either. known it, I knew got him before cancelled. I knew Carol Middleton because I actually spoke for him at a conference. In Did you Ibiza. go to Ibiza? Yeah, he got. He, he pulled me and Chuds over to. Um, Did you go to his gaff? No, we went to what was it? Just the Hard Rock. It was like a proper hotel, the Hard Rock Hotel. Oh, that's fantastic! That's where we have a lot of like big club sessions yeah, and stuff yeah, over there, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, that was um, interesting. Yeah, he had a the lineup: Dave Pierce, is that Fatboy you, Slim, and James that, Sinclair. What is? <laughs> what a he's lineup! A smart, he's a smart person. He um, is. Uh, do you think he's going to do well out of it? Uh, yeah, I think he could do, actually. Is, 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 the question is, is all publicity good publicity? Absolutely not. Categorically not. Uh, no, all publicity is not good publicity in uh, any way, shape or form. But the reason why, he's got a lot of bravado, Gary. He's yeah. a very enigmatic guy. He's very vivacious. He's very out there. But he's actually a really Can nice you try and guy. Use a few more descriptive words about. <laughs> yeah. <him>. He's flamboyant. <laughs> yeah. He's illustrious. Yeah. Um, but he's actually a really nice guy at his heart, and I think he wants to. He would never admit this, but I think he would like to change the media perception. He's on the front page of the Sun today. You know, he's like red top tabloid fodder. For for some good reason as well. What did the Sun say about him today? Oh, he's about him slagging off Harry or something. I don't know. Um, he does do that, doesn't he? He does do that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the reason why he he is tabloid fodder for good reason. But he's actually got a good heart. So he. So I by think the he would, time like, this goes out, he could have won. He's won it or got himself cancelled. Yeah. So yeah. we might have to cut this entire section out. Who yeah. knows? But yeah, so we've been supporting him with with all of that stuff. There you go. Um, and what, what's this present here, Chad? So I've got to give it to him. This looks lovely, by there's, the way. There's a present there for you, JB. Thank you. What does it say on there? It says, to Bert the Burke. <laughs> to Bert the Burke. Because that's what some people call you in the comments. They do. If, is this what I hope oh, it is? Oh, their muscles. Did you see that? He <laughs> ripped off that ribbon. I hope it's oh. Stephen Bartlett's autobiography. I <laughs> 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 oh, oh, can't get it. Dear. I can't get open. Oh, look oh, my at go- that. Oh, my God. Look at it. It's... It's a James Sinclair note diary. So you can be like Does that me? mean that I could do the eight traits of the greats in my own book yeah, now? You Absolutely can. fantastic. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Christmas has come early. And if, if you, you want to get one of those. <laughs> God, you do the hard sell. If you want to get one of those books, you can buy them on my website, jamesinclair.net. There you go. Fantastic. Right. Today, we are speaking to Joe Ladd. Um, I'm excited for it. I always like agency owner ones because I could vicariously just sit there and learn. Yeah. Well, he's got a business called Social Lab. I love that. 
which I didn't pick up that it was a survey. I did. I, I thought I it was the only reason was because I thought it was going to be one of these like Web three like you buy the land projects, and I was like, oh, this is going to go down like a heap of the soft, smelly stuff with Sinclair crypto, crypto yeah. fake land, but it's not. No, it's an agent. How long has he been going? He has been going about six years. <laughs> <laughs> Got your notes yeah, back up now. Really. <laughs> I'll feel for you. Um, it's just so, so take about my notebook. I just lost myself in was, looking uh, at so it. Revenues is he doing? Thirty a grand a month. Doing it team time. members. Team members. He has seven of the little beauties. Let's go into his challenges then. Yeah, because we've never had this before. Um, so challenge one: as a wheelchair user, often people are immediately struck by that rather than what we offer as a service. Now you know as a. As a marketer looking for a point of difference, the fact that you are different in any way probably makes you stand out in a room, so you could consider it a good thing. But equally, I get why it might be a challenge because people want to talk to you more about your your different ability rather than the thing that you do. Potentially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, my mum was in a wheelchair, and I'd never do her not in a wheelchair yeah. before she passed away. It's right? a very different world, isn't it? You can I think only people will just ask what was what I was amazed by him. Um, is, is undiagnosed because my boys didn't. Yeah, that's it. unbelievable. Yeah, that's... my mum had MS, so we, you know, yeah, this is the reason. But yeah, and, and, you, and there's still... no denying that there there is a stigma with wheelchair. I don't know whether you because this is so many years ago. I don't know whether you remember my dad in his last five six years, he was in a wheelchair and he hated going out in a wheelchair. He hated it. And stuff was like, what's your what's your problem with it? And he's like, oh, everyone's just looking. At me. They're not looking at you. You're just making up. They're looking at. You. And then you go down the aisle of the supermarket. I was like, oh, actually, everyone. So I get, I get why this is potentially a business or a mindset or both challenge. I do get that. Okay, challenge number two. Challenge number two, getting people over the hurdle of trusting anybody marketing related in 2024 as they have a bad rep, in brackets, understandably. Now, we had a little pre-chat chat with yeah. Joe before we came on. Yeah. I don't really get this. Uh, I, I do, as an, as an agency. Well, owner, I wouldn't I, trust you. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust you, frankly. I only, I only turn up because Nigel watching. makes a lovely coffee. <laughs> and if I like Chuds. Look at this shirt he's wearing today. Oh, here he goes again. He sat down and just loads of shortbread fell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, come, I've come dressed as an extra from Brokeback Mountain in yeah. case we need to do yeah. any like bromance like pre-roll videos. Yeah. Um, shortbread. <laughs> <laughs> You're pleased with that, aren't you? Do people aren't you? really not trust marketing agencies? No, people hate marketing agencies. The amount of times that I have, and and Joe mentioned this in the pre-chat chat, he's ended up growing his agency's offering because people probably know, like, and trust him in one area. Go, could you do this? And could you do this? And could you do this? Just because so many others do a bad job. But he also said that lots of business owners think they understand marketing and they yes. learn some YouTube. But I actually think that makes people better customers, in my experience. I, I think so, yeah. You I know, you so. want them to get PPC that they should be going on facebook yeah. and doing ads and they, they should be making content yeah um and then you can then there's a game of educating them yes but I, I find those that at least want to have a go at marketing is much much easier to deal with because we've got a couple of clients and they've just got no interest in it whatsoever so we try and do like a monthly call with them like what will you talk about at the moment what's your offerings at the moment what special offers have you got on what stuff is in the calendar and they're like yeah don't know really no no like, nah, yeah whatever and i'm like it's actually quite difficult because then because but, person- but I already know the big problem with him, and we had a marketing agency on probably six episodes ago or something. I remember giving the same advice to them. They're choosing the wrong type of customer. Yes. That are- guy put a post out on LinkedIn today, actually. He had to let three of his staff go. So he, he didn't quite tell us how tricky his situation was. Mm. And he ended up in the hospital with stress. I saw it literally today. I was meant to forward it on to you. Who was that? Um, the, the, so the marketing agency. Aaron. Aaron. Oh yeah. My God. yeah. Can, can you put a note in and I'll reach out to him, please, Nigel? Well, that's not funny, is no. it? No. Um, and we'll reach out to him. Yeah, we should. We, um, but the, the, the advice we gave Aaron was that if you want to go after people that are spending £300, £500 a month, yes. it's going to be a challenge. And maybe they should be doing their own marketing. And I do yeah. think small business owners should be spending more time on marketing than anything else. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, look, when you when you start a business you really are the cash flow executive officer that's the ceo title you know yeah. you're not the chief executive officer your job is to get more cash. cfeo you should be shouldn't you the yeah. cash flow yeah you've got to get more cash into your business how do you do that you build a great product you then need people to know about your product and you need to have the foundations of marketing all of mm. the successful people that we know 
that have done well in business are marketeers to some degree. Verbatim. Yes. Steve Jobs, Walt Disney, I mean, Richard Branson. They're like, the reason we know who that, Elon Musk, the mm. reason we know who those people are is because they get the power of marketing. Yeah. Not sales, marketing. Yeah. Um, you had um, Daniel Priestley on your main channel a couple of weeks ago now, yeah. didn't you? And, and he's a prime example. I bet yeah. most people don't know what Daniel Priestley does, but they know Daniel Priestley. Yeah, he's a and then And then they'll dive in and go, oh, that score app's quite good, isn't it? But yeah, well, he, 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 he has shares in companies, never owns 100% of all of them, but that he's just like wheeled out as Mr. PR yeah, to yeah. talk about them. Yeah, and it works, doesn't it? Pretty much like Richard Branson, he's yeah. got... He owns 100% of the Virgin brand, but not 100% of hardly any of the Virgin companies. No, exactly. Some of them he's got really small minorities in now, but let's wheel out Richard. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. He's literally like the queen opening the hospital or the king opening the hospital. Like, they're a face promoting the brand. And and so I think small businesses should be doing this. But if you're a good marketing agency, you should be going after the people bigger that have clients. got bigger budgets. And I think there's a challenge when you're a little agency, when you start out, obviously, in any business, but especially the agency world, you'll take the work that you can get. Absolutely. But Absolutely. then you have to invest your time and you have to see it almost like those smaller clients. And this is no disrespect to the level of clients that they're at, but they pay for your time and then you can spend your time getting the next level of clients. And then you, then you have the same challenge when you get to the next level. There's more fun with bigger up. clients. You know, if, if you've got someone that says, yeah, I've got a budget of 50 grand a month, to, yeah. you can actually deliver much more for them. Yeah, yeah. And you can choose the best people to work for you. Yeah, you know it's not about you just cash flowing. They're less payroll. demanding as well when they're when they're operating. I've got a client at the moment, and he's like, "Oh, can you help us work out where we're going to spend our advertising?" I said, "How much? You, how much do you want to spend?" He said, "Well, we'll do a hundred. We'll do a hundred on Facebook and Instagram. We'll probably do the same on on LinkedIn and um, PPC." I went, hundred what a day? We went on hundred k for the month each." So now you talk about oh, two hundred thousand. Yeah, so about singulars, <laughs> and I was like, "Ah, uh -huh, yeah, yeah." <laughs> Got my notebook out and I was like, okay, add some more zeros to that. But but that just makes it so much easier. And he's the least demanding client that we've got and spends the most money by Absolutely. a country mile. Yep. Absolutely. So I think going after the right clients is, is well, we'll an agency mindset challenge. He's listening in the wings. He is. Challenge number three. Uh, growing this business while also focusing on my other startup slash charity work. Oh, that's always difficult, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, don't mean, I think all of that should stop until your basket is fully woven. And can hold all the eggs before you start making baskets. That's very nice. That felt like a fairy tale there. Because I think what what people, certainly the people that follow me and listen and watch my stuff, mm. well, James Sinclair's running all these. He's got many eggs in many baskets. Mm. But like I like to remind people, is my senior team is at least a million pound cost that allows yeah. me to do that, and that is the folly that most entrepreneurs don't have yeah. that they haven't invested into management that's better than you to go and run all these other yeah. things i think the other thing is if you're not where you want to be a lot of times people think oh well if i add something else on that's a solution to the problem it's not you're just adding more workload on like yeah. double down focusing on the thing go an inch wide and a mile deep like fix that problem first get that to where you want it to be because i think you're absolutely right they listen to the likes of you and they're here yeah, they pick up multiple streams of income and all this sort of stuff, yeah. and they go, which oh, is right. Good. Which is right. It is the, all the right advice. Yes, to have multiple revenue streams is all the right advice, but only one, the first one, is there. Is there, and and working without you in it. Correct. Yeah, most people will not invest in the right management team. That's why I talk about the. There's two things here that really fit beautifully in with where his challenges are. Number one is the four company philosophy that I always talk about, but then. The second one is E plus M equals S. That's my favourite. Because but if we do the, you know, the e plus, uh, the, the four companies, um, he he's in company number one. He just wants to cash flow, pay the bills, pay his seven staff. I know this is his mindset. Just, it's, a, it's like a story written so many times yeah. when people come on this podcast. But actually, company number two, the one you really want to be, has he actually identified that he wants people spending mm. 50 grand a month, one customer, you know, and how's he going to get there? And yeah. that's why I like people to write it down. And, you know, to do them other things until you can afford people to yeah. manage it for you. I think, you're, I think you're so right with that. I think because you get bogged down in the day-to-day -day of like the doing of the stuff. Yeah. That if you said, well, you know, I wish we had you know, a better level of client. Well, what does that client look like? Yeah. What does that look And what have you actually proactively done to go and get that client? Oh, I wish I could, you know, if you've got 
500 quid clients and you have to have you know, 100 of them could make you 50 grand a month or you have one, imagine the less workload. Yes, it's harder to get a 50 grand client potentially over the line, but it might actually not be. But until you even consider that, your mind's eye can't even be aware that you're looking for that thing. And that's why this whole paper. company philosophy, the company you are today and the company you really want to be, um, is so important because you don't disregard the ones that you've got right now. Yeah. But in unison, you work to... to Get the it. next level. Yeah, 100%. And do, do you know why I think a lot of small business owners don't go for the big people? Because it takes more time. Yeah. Um, we, 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 Centre Parts is a customer of ours now. You know, it took 15 months to get them over the line as a, to be on their supplier portal and all of that stuff from having that first conversation. But there's nowhere in that 15 months you go, oh, this ain't worth the effort, is there? No. But we... We identified want, you know you want a little bit of money from a lot of people a lot of the time absolutely but you also want to be planning for big contracts in yeah. your business yeah and you know that's why i always talk about the philosophy of you're building a company to sell even if you have no intention of selling it if you were selling your business what are the list of things you would do to make it more attractive and valuable and that's why lots of people and do them before you're trying to sell people yeah you should have that philosophy from day one and if you go and speak to any venture capitalist private equity person they invest in a business day one, right? We're going to invest in management so that it looks more attractive to sell when it's five times bigger in three or five years' time. Yeah. You know, they're, day one, they they're invest looking to in invest something. after they've already invested they, in buying it. Exit day yeah. is being planned on day one of investing day. Yeah. yeah. And then and they, entrepreneurs don't think like no, that. No, that's true. And that's no. why the other coin phrase, investorpreneur, that's why I've coined that phrase because if entrepreneurs can just steal a little bit of the good stuff from investors, they'll have much better businesses. Mm. But you're right. Uh, we always ask people whether they want to be in a little bit of time. So in one year's time, he said he would like to be able to support himself, his partner and his newborn son. Oh, he's got a baby as well thrown into Muscle the top. mix. Congratulations. Um, with, residential, uh, with a residual income in social and without myself needing to be there to run it, allowing more time for, to be with my family, to work on new ideas I have and do what I am most passionate about. A whole other conversation in itself, but it relates to my life story of being disabled, using gaming as an outlet and how that has led me to being who I am today. I'm very passionate about pushing the positives of gaming for everyone but in particular people like myself who are unable to express our competitiveness through things like football rugby etc he's a man trying to spin plates isn't he well the first plate's still a little bit wobbly i think um what does a business look like when it's finished i have a plan for this this is what we like to hear i have a plan for this he says i've designed a model for an agency with a pod system i don't even know what this is it sounds exciting this means each pod Includes, oh, okay, so he's going to have it as pods. So each pod includes an account manager for a number of clients with a team behind them covering everything, such as website, social media, advertising, design, and so on. In theory, this is a copy and paste model that can be scaled up massively. The end product here is having pods created for specific niches, such as home services, property, leisure, beauty, etc., to name a few. This will allow small, medium businesses access to a marketing team that they never have been able to previously access. <coughs> Excuse my voice. I got there in the end. So there we go. Uh, does he make the profit that he wants to make? If so, what is it? No, currently most of the money is being reinvested to scale the business. What does he do day to day, day, to day with his time? Uh, day to day, he's managing. Uh, he's switching between helping account manage with his right-hand man, George, and working on growing the business internally, improving processes, keeping up to date with the latest trends and technology. This is another area of improvement, as I feel I'm currently spread very thin, but I have so much passion and energy to give to do great things. So there you go. That's Joe Land. Let's get him on. Let's get him on. Hey, Joe, how are you doing? Hello, guys. You all right? Joe, very, very, well. very, very welcome to the business broadcast. You're very welcome. Very welcome. <laughs> wow, that's the warmest welcome that everyone has ever been welcomed by. <laughs> yes. Joe, in your own words, can you just give us 30 seconds of anything we've missed there, or is there any points that you would like to say about your business? Um, I think you got it fairly accurate, to be honest. I, I think the, the, the main thing about what I'm trying to do here, as you mentioned, obviously, I've, I've taken it from social media, doing it, Joe, the, you know, Joe doing social media at the start, to something much, much more to expand the services. And that is the premise of what I'm doing, is to, is to be able to give um, small to medium-sized businesses access to services which they would never, ever usually be able to afford or, or do. And do, do you, is there any money left at the end of the month after payroll, or do you feel like you just burn through all your cash? I think it's it is a little bit of that for sure. Uh, I think it's also that I am in a position now where we've been trying to take that money left over and use it for things like you know scaling the business, outreaching, cold email, marketing, all of this sort of stuff. Um, 
and I'm just figuring it out. I mean, I don't have any business within my family. Um, I am the first person, so I don't. I, I've never had anybody internally that I can talk to about it. So I really am at the minute, kind of just learning from things like podcasts and YouTube, and you know, basically people that I meet to to put the money into places that might be able to help grow the business. Yet to succeed with that yet, but there we are. What do you What do you feel like? Yeah. Your challenges getting leads, or you've got too many leads and you can't find the staff to look after the leads. Which no, to be honest with you, it is it getting the, the leads is um, is doable, I think. Um, but it's actually but it's actually getting people to understand what the what the purpose of that would be, and, and it does tie into the the challenge that obviously you spoke about, which is getting people to trust anyone marketing related. Um, because it's that's it, because it's hard, but, but that is because you've got small to medium sized business owners that are in the same boat as you. They're burning through cash. Yeah. They don't have much left at the end of the month, if any. And f- to give any away, even a hundred pounds, two hundred pounds, that's them having to sacrifice their own cash mm-hmm. in the hope that the business is going to grow and you're going to give them an immediate return. And and I think marketing sometimes. Like certainly if you're doing SEO and content marketing takes time to get results. Sure. And if they're gonna do pay per click advertising, which you know, I'm a man that will probably do half a million on Google and, and Facebook ads this year, um, across our businesses, you do get immediate results. But I also know sometimes you have to put quite a bit of budget in to work out how it's all gonna work to get your row as is up and all of that sort of stuff. And mm-hmm. lots of micro businesses sub half a million turnover which i'm guessing is the sort of people you're going after which is most businesses by the mm. way a huge majority of businesses are less than a hundred thousand turnover um it's a big risk for them to lay out two three four five hundred pound a month for marketing and that's why they try and do it themselves and like you heard in my opening monologue for this is I think you should go after some bigger hitters that would probably get a better return on investment for your services. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I think that's the that, that's the the position we're in at the minute. I mean, I've had debates with myself, and when I started this up, you know, do I want lots of little clients or do I want a few big clients, and do I want somewhere in between? And and, and I've swapped from one end to the other and back again, and and, and everything. So I I am in that position where it's the understanding of I love we do that. actually need to work with larger people. Debates um, with yourself. That's uh, one of the most beautiful things that I've heard on this podcast. Because I think it yes, sums it? Yeah. up how we all yeah. behave as business yeah, owners. Yeah. That internal debate with yourself. I mean, look, the thing is that what makes a great business is the three KPI rule. Are you producing monthly management accounts? Do you do that? Yes. So it's all tracked. Have an accountant. It's all done in zero profit, loss, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Am I actively looking at that, printing it out, sitting in front of my desk, looking at it every month? The honest answer to that is no. Well, you'll be more profitable instantly once you start doing that. And that's actually sure. one of my problems, actually. We've got QuickBooks, we've got Zero, we've got cloud computing, which means it's easier than ever to track and understand this stuff. But I think people, most business owners that are under two and a half million of turnover, don't do this enough. Um, if you print off your profit and loss and sit with your team each month and start creating board meetings so they know if you're profitable or making a loss so that they can be with you to help you make changes to make you more profitable next month will instantly start seeing your business more profitable that's the first thing second you should be not worrying about how much your revenue is growing but how much your average customer value or transactional value is growing so if a customer you know you you don't want to be you know, we want to get to seven hundred fifty thousand of revenue this year so well, actually our average customers are spending eight thousand pounds with us how can we turn that 8000 a year into £12,000 a year? And that will make you more profitable overnight. So let's talk about sure. growing average order value or average customer value or transactional value. It depends what it is. You know, if you're running a shop, you're looking at transactional value or basket value. If you're running, and, and I always say this to accountants, you know, you go, okay, we've got 300,000 turnover and we've got 300 customers. Well, actually, how can we get them 300 customers to generate 350,000 a turnover because that's a service based business a big chunk of that 50,000 will drop to the bottom line just by increasing the average order value and not a lot of people yeah. are focusing on that enough so monthly management accounts average customer value less customers spending more with you will drive up the profitability 
And number three, this is the big one, labor to turnover ratio or revenue per employee. The best businesses are the ones that say, yeah, we turn 10 million pounds and we've got 10 staff. That's a million pounds revenue per employee. You, sir, are doing 360,000 turnover. Is that what you're saying a year, roughly? About that, yeah. And how many staff have you got? So, uh, so it is seven, but they're not seven uh, all PAYE members of staff. Some of them are on self-employed and, and stuff like that. But, yes, it's seven total. That have, have Are they relying members. on you for most of their work, those seven yes. people? Yes, it's about but, 51 grand, isn't it? 50 yeah, so yeah. Like you've got 51,000 revenue per employee. So now by the time you paid your staff, your office costs and your insurance and all that, there ain't a lot left of excess revenue after paying yeah. your employees. So you need to be thinking, right, I want to have 250,000 revenue per employee. These little KPIs will start making you a better business owner. Yeah. And you're Looking at the statistics. And your accountant, you know, should, you know, sometimes be worth paying them to come and sit with you once a month to sit on those board meetings and say, look, this is the metrics that can improve your business. Sure. I yeah. think for agency no, owners, from, from experience, that um, labour to turnover ratio or the, or the revenue per head, that was a real eye opener for me. Because I was like, wow, we've got. Like exactly, exactly as you're saying there. Once you take all the costs out, if if you don't have like the big consultancy projects which I have to sort of run and sit sit above, then actually the the, the amount isn't isn't that great. And you sort of go, well, the model here is because you talked about models in a previous episode. Yeah. But with the model here is, no, is naff. Then you have to go after the bigger clients. Exactly as you've said. I mean, I always say these. If I'm a marketing agency. <laughs> Why are you not just creating a product and doing all your marketing stuff and selling it yourself? I just don't understand it. Like, you know, if you're, you know, and you play to your strengths, you know, yeah, yeah, you, you're in a, you're a disabled person, create products for disabled people that there's a massive need, there's niches in that need, and you run Facebook ads to it and SEO to it. Um, we, we had, did you hear the episode? We had a guy that actually sells reconditioned wheelchairs and scooters. He was, doing no marketing other than eBay and he was helping himself to 35 grand a month and he had That's like right, yeah. three staff yes, and yeah, yeah. 60% gross profit yeah. and it, it, because there's, there is riches in niches whether you're selling stamps or you're selling yoga mats mm. or fishing stuff if you can find niches build a Shopify website keep your marketing agency but use all your getting customers knowledge to do it for yourself and then let me tell you now you will have people knocking on your door saying I love what you're doing there can you market our business? Because I can see what you're doing on your own business. That is the biggest way of building trust. People like every single day reach out now saying, James, can you do some consultancy work for us? Oh, I'm not a consultant. I've never once said, hire me to do consultancy <laughs> yeah. work. Here. I, I just have no interest in doing it. But obviously people watch this stuff. Yeah. And you'll start getting it, JB, on the back of me. You yeah. <laughs> I already have. You already have. But you, you, but because of this content, that, that is creating trust because they're spending hours with you yeah. via podcast, via YouTube, via books, via newsletters, and um, and they'll reach out to you and start asking for you and wanting you. Mm. You know, and and I think if you can really prove your worth by having a trading business, and that's why people reach out to me. That's what sort of the analogy I've given here. Is going well. James is running all these businesses. We see him doing it all on YouTube. He's not a consultant, but I want to pay him lots of money for um, doing it. I mean, people reach out all the time. Actually, someone was cheeky yesterday. This is my favourite quid pro quo offer. Hi, James. I've got hairdressers in Shoreditch. If I cut your hair, would you come and give me a chat? <laughs> I thought, well, that's a that's good. A ch- <laughs> so twenty five quid. He does my mop. <laughs> You're going to drive yeah, into yeah. Shoreditch and have, have three grand worth of consultancy for half an hour. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. So someone, someone asked me for some help, and I just said, you know, what would you would you like to pay me? And they just paid three grand into my bank account for me to help them uh, do some, and, and I very rarely do it now. You are going to get so many people now reach out. It's subject title, 3K in your bank. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't have the time. Even 
even people have offered me more than that. I just don't have the time, but no. that's not that's not the point of it. But what I'm saying is if you can create something that's tried, tested, and proven, you will get better leads, Joe. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it does make sense. It, it makes sense, yeah. I, I also think, Joe, as well, you're, the, the space that you're in, in terms of like small business, generalised marketing agency, I think that's the hardest form of marketing agency. They don't have the money. Because mm. they haven't. That's the thing, Joe. You're going after people that don't have the money. Yeah. It's not that they don't yeah. want to spend the money with you. They just don't have it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, it, Can I just give you, I want, to, I want you to go away. There's a little fact now that I want you to think about here. Sure. So UK size of businesses, we, we've mentioned this on the pod before. There's 7,500 companies of which some 7,500 companies will be controlled by, I think, 5,000 people. I'd be one of those. I've got, 200, I've got multiple companies that have got more than 250 employees each. But if you go on UK statistics, there's only 7,500 companies with more than 250 people. Really? Is that all it is? That is the size of a big village. Yeah. <laughs> so there's only 7,500 companies controlling most of the workforce. Yeah. But of that 7,500, I reckon that's controlled by four to 5,000 individuals employing most of the people. Only 30% of businesses in this country pay VAT. So 70% of businesses are under 85,000 revenue. I think it's only a half a percent of businesses in the UK go past 10 million of revenue. If you're, if you're shopping around the people that are doing 100, 150,000, by the time they've paid all their wages, like you, Joe, they'll be in a similar situation for you. There ain't that much left over. So the best thing to do is identify 10 people that you could really change their business then work out how you contact them because if you had 10 good customers spending a hundred thousand pounds a year with you you could have an amazing business yeah and a nice yeah, life <laughs> I, I i had uh, there's an interesting thing and i love telling this little story there's a recent story um i had grant thornton come along and speak at my investor who are they for those for those who don't they're know they're a top 10 world accountant but they help with M and A and and sales Tax and acquisitions, advice, right. General auditing. Just oh, okay. General accountants. Right. But right. if you go to one of the big ten accountants, your Ernest Youngs, your KPMGs, Deloitte's, yeah. and all of that, they will have various departments within their organisation. That some do audits, some do inheritance tax planning, some do mergers and acquisitions, uh, and they've got these different departments. Anyway, so I got their mergers and acquisitions team to come and speak at Investorpreneur. We did like a fireside chat with them. Oh, nice. They've got 120 full-time, qualified, expensive accountancy people that work in their M&A team just here in the United of the Kingdoms, right? Right. 120 staff. And I said to them, how many businesses do you sell a year? Between 60 and 70. He didn't even realise what he said and what I was, you know, bringing him into here. There's 120 full-time qualified accountants only selling 60 to 70 businesses a year. Now, you go to Christie's or all them Savills and all those business transfer agents, they'll be selling thousands of mum and pop, small businesses, big businesses, all and sundry. But Grant Thornton say, oh, no, 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 no. We just want to sell businesses that are making over a million pounds worth of profit that we can sell into private equity or to people that are going to buy with other people's money. And they know their lane. They only want to take the right people on. Mm. And I just I find that a really good lesson because Grant Thornton, over a couple of hundred years of history, have gone from partnership to partners, or, you know, multiple partners in accountants. They've handed down the baton over the years. They said, don't mess around with small stuff. If you want to make money, you want to build a commercially profitable enterprise, know your lane. So, yes, people will be ringing them up going, I've got a corner shop. It's making 60 grand a year. Like, they're just putting the phone down on them. They're not interested. Yeah. And I think entrepreneurs, we are judge, jury, and executioner over everything we do. So we can't help ourselves sometimes to take every bloody opportunity that comes in. Mm. And actually, we've got to get fussier at saying no. But then when we say yes, we really say yes. I think the other thing as well, Joe, you've, you've touched on this, you know, in your challenge too, you know, how do you get people to trust you? I think because it's such a low barrier to entry, all Absolutely, you need yeah. 
is an internet connection Absolutely. and an Instagram account. And then you're yeah. up and running and you and you know you get one viral post on TikTok and all of a sudden you're a TikTok agency. Yeah. There's no barometer, there's no uh you know, there's no university degree. There's there's no barrier to entry with lots of people coming into the marketplace. So you are always going to be fighting upstream against a bunch of people that have primarily. I, I bet half your half your clients have come to you because someone else was doing a bad job in the first place, yes. and then you have to take them from minus ten of enjoyment of agencies to get them sort of up to neutral to then loving you, being sort of like a plus ten in terms of whether they'd be a flag waving advocate for you. But you're gonna have yeah. to do a hell of a lot of work to get them to that point when they are a small business and you have to do it on a small budget and they're going to expect and i've and i've had this they're going to come to you expecting that they're four or five hundred quid because it is a big chunk of their their money each month they're going to expect that they're going to put that in and they're going to be getting 25 30 yeah. grand off the back end of it that's just they're going to be the bernard think. Arnoux in 24 months <laughs> yeah 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 exactly <laughs> so i think you've got you, you, your branding's really nice your layout's really nice your messaging's really nice i love uh, like your, your content and how it's laid yeah, out it's it brilliant looks, looks great it looks really nice i just <laughs> think but yeah you know, i'll go to services i'm but like oh my god you do so much stuff when people trundle into your office or you go and see clients they will hear your desperation for revenue your do anything and actually, when you start saying no to people, the universe will deliver the right people to you without getting too woo-woo about it's it. It's true. It's so true. Yeah. yeah. It's so true. Absolutely. You know, like, we, it's weird. And then when you get one big customer, more come. And I see that all the time mm. <laughs> in all my businesses. You yeah. know, you start doing well, and then the people, their competitors go, well, we must be using them. Yeah. Like, you know, we supply yeah. every holiday park in the country now, nearly, with children's arts and crafts yeah. and toys. And all the others just come in because we're supplying the others. You know, where were you three years ago when I was getting this up and running and trying to <laughs> drag it across the line? I'm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little story now that really sums up this beautifully. Now, uh, you've got to know him and I'm sure he'll become a great friend of yours. But James Martin, not the chef, um, a good friend of mine who JB is going to do some podcasts for. Um, I went out for dinner with him the other night and he was telling me about this guy we were talking about car dealerships, isn't it? Conversation just gone, car dealerships. Um, and we were talking about a Rolls-Royce dealership, about this particular gentleman that's passed away that had a Rolls-Royce dealership, done very, very well. Um, a customer comes in to an office and sees a ro- uh, into the showroom and sees a Rolls-Royce there. Secretary comes and gets this particular owner out and says, oh, there's someone that would like to buy this Rolls-Royce. All right, so he goes out sees the particular customer and the customer says look you know i see it's up here for i'm making the numbers up two hundred thousand. what if i give you one hundred eighty thousand for it right now in cash and so the owner of the dealership could go yeah right, i'll do that but then he's just branded oh he'll always do a deal he'll always do that what he says says well i can't sell you that one but for one hundred eighty thousand, i've got a jaguar over there that's more within your budget <laughs> and I just love this little story. Anyway, the bloke paid the two hundred thousand and took the Rolls Royce because he didn't want to be put down. Yeah, that he couldn't <laughs> afford it. And that little story there is a lot of what happens with small to medium sized yeah, enterprises. You know, but when you say no, and you say, "Look, I don't think we're the right people for you. I don't think you can afford our services. Why don't you try so and so? There are more low budget, low results agency. Go and check them out." And then when you're ready and you really want to get better results and you want to see explosive growth, come back to us. Mm. You've got to have business arrogance to do that, haven't you? And confident in your... <laughs> Just the, that, that little story like, well, look, that obviously isn't the car for you because you can't afford it. We've your got something price range within 180 your... grand. Yeah. <laughs> We've got something more within your budget just over here. So. Oh, brilliant. So, <laughs> it's a great little no, story, great. isn't it? I love and, that. And I think um, something that business owners need to remember. What do you think to that, Joe? I, I, I think it is so true. I mean, it's something that I've become more self-aware of in, I'd say, probably the last year or so is, is like not just saying yes. I, I mean, like you say at the start, You'll take any client that right. you can get, right? And as it goes on, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not in a position where I can turn over whoever I whoever I don't want to work with because you know what, sort it sort of thing. But you know, I, I definitely am learning that if you say yes to everything, people take advantage of that. People it devalues what it is that you're actually doing. You know, if you make compromises, all of this sort of stuff. So I am definitely better at it, and I've turned away a number of clients. Do you know, do you know what though, that. Joe? The first oh. stage is awareness of it. That he really, yeah. really is like everything in life. Feel like if you if you want to lose weight, stage one is being aware that you need to lose weight. 
you yeah. want to stop smoking stage one is i need to stop smoking it's not you know, awareness is the first stage but if that's happened you're on your journey my friend good <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm starting it anyway for sure yeah i think also as well one of the things you talked about the business what does it look like when it's finished this whole pod model that you've got about having an account manager then having a team behind them i think that sounds amazing but if you're Sarchi and Sarchi. If you're Sarchi and Sarchi, but I think it could be amazing for the client and bad for you as the business owner because I think those people will still expect that they're going to pay their 500, you know, 1,000, 1,500 quid a month. And for that, they're then going to get social media, website, advertising, design, you know, uh, an account manager. You've got five people in that pod who you have to split that 1,500 quid with. Now, of course, you can go and get, you know, 30, 1,500 quids and they can split that work. But in the agency game, you have to be very aware of how many clients you can actually serve. And yes, there's AI and there's tools and stuff, but it's still very, very labor intensive, very labor intensive. So you just need to be mindful of how many people could that pod actually service. Let's say there's five members of that team in there, for example, and they could look after very, you know, they could do a job well for, you know, five clients. Then you need to be bringing in, you know, potentially that pod needs to be charging out 30, 40, 50 grand per month to make it cover all the salaries. Do you know, it goes back to the size of the client, doesn't it? Yeah. And then the other thing yeah. is, that I think one of the things I just don't like about social media companies, it's probably the most popular business type that I've had on the pod, if I really think about it. Mm. It's very low barrier to entry. I know you touched on that earlier, Jeb. Anyone, like, I could start a marketing agency tomorrow. You should do that as a YouTube series. I, I know I, I could, and I would get clients, and oh yeah, and they would be so demanding. There's no... There's no it's very hard like one of the magic words in entrepreneurship is leverage you know so let's talk about you know i make this cup you know i put all the r d work into making this cup and i could sell it to a hundred different people and so there's a lot of work this book this iphone i make the iphone i put a lot of r d work into i don't make the iphone but you know i could sell it internationally around yeah. the world your clients come to you and they all want a different thing they all have different demands now, the ones that do very well that have come on are usually because they focus on a niche. Like, they just look after local authorities. Yeah. They look just after childcare. Like, even yours, JB, you just really do podcasts, don't you? Yes. You know, and the temptation to do everything, yeah, because people go, oh, we well, really trust you here. Can you do this for us? Can you do that yeah. for us? And it is so tempting to just say yes, yes, yes. But over time, you get known to be all and sundry, and then they will not pay the specialist price for the ultimate expert every industry you know a job you know, we talk about doctors is the best way of explaining it a gp what do they earn between 35 and 120 thousand depend or a, a general practitioner doctor straight out of uni i think they're on 35k they could get up to 120k that's their salary range a specialist doctor you become a neuroscientist or an eye doctor or I don't know, a special doctor that you could be on 600,000 a year mm. doing private work and you know seeing less people seeing doing less, less work people. having less stress yeah being paid more for it yeah you don't get the gynecologist and yeah yeah i'll do optometrist now <laughs> you know like that, they they <laughs> put your elbow in the stirrups i'll yeah. have a look at that as well <laughs> while you're there yeah. so i do think that you know that human beings have an affection in paying the ultimate experts for their money and if they see you're a generalist they will bat Pay. you down on price yeah, yeah. I think I think with that it's it's again it's a, a debate I've had with myself right I said it before but it is one of those things where I've been advised by people to to niche in on something um, and I, and, I, and I agree and totally get it as well but I think for me the and maybe this is wrong I don't know but the the the, the model or, or premise of what it is that I'm trying to do has come from something that I've realised people need or want. In the sense of it, it's not that I actively went out and thought I want to make more money, so therefore I'm going to offer all the services. It was the fact that well, I was we was actually being asked, can we do those services? And and therefore the the realization was that that okay, people aren't necessarily using us because we're the greatest social media poster in the entire world or, or whatever it might be. People are using us because it makes things a lot easier and also better it to, to have it all managed through one place. So without going into too much detail, like you can imagine um you know uh google ads as, as one service you know we, we, you're doing google ads for somebody and then if that requires um something to be added onto the website but that website's managed by a different company 
and they need to get a design that's done by the graphic designer who's internal. It then becomes a very, very long, you know, uh, inefficient chain. Whereas if everything is managed through one group or one person or, or, or company, it makes it makes things easier f- from both our perspective, from the from the actual doing perspective, and also for small the businesses. For small yeah, businesses, for sure, it, but, exactly. But the right and, clients, and it is, yeah. The right clients and the big. I mean, I you know I do, you know, done work with American Express right up to some of the world's biggest brands in this country. Like they use specialists when they're doing PPC. Sure. They do not want to go to an all and sundry agency. They want to go to an agency that just does PPC. That are the ultimate experts in it. Do do you think that means that there's then just not room for a marketing agency that targets the small? Because obviously, I, I know that it, it, don't get me wrong. If you just want to make a wage, right? If you just want to make a wage, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you okay. if you want to make a wage and you're happy with four to fifty grand a year, but my argument would be, look, why don't you build a business that turns a million quid that has ten clients that pay you a hundred grand a year each that are the next size up? Sure. If I yeah. offered you the situation to have what you've got right now, I go look. I've got this million pound business uh, with just five clients. They all spend two hundred grand a year each. Um, they're all local authorities, and they want you to do a particular part of their marketing for them. And they're going to give you a five year contract. You're going to choose that every day. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> that, that 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 is the answer. The other thing that you know we're. You, know, you have a great business where people love what you do, they want what you do, and they need what you do. And usually people have the love and the want or the want and the need. So, you know, waste is a great example of this. You know, people do not want waste around their house because they want it gone or they need it gone. And actually, they love the fact that they can have clean homes and businesses and places of work. So love, want, and need is the metric to find. If you have just got a product that's want and need and you're not producing results that people absolutely love you and see as an absolute essential service, which is what experts have, experts get all three, love, want, and need, rather than just, yeah, okay, I want that, need it. Do I do I love them? Are they my favourite supplier? You know, Are they, they taking me up into like the echelons of this is amazing, best results? The iPhone is yeah. the best example of that. You know, they, people love their iPhone. They want their iPhone. They need their iPhone. That's why, you know, they're so valuable. And if you can get that over the line and meet all three, you know, people love holidays. Yeah. They want holidays. Do they need them? <laughs> you know, that's the question. You know? Like yeah. days out, you know, like this is a big part of my business. You know, they love days out. They want days out. Do they need them? No, not really. They they want nice family memories. And, you know, that's why my Father Christmas experience um, is one of my most popular events because I think that's gone into the need category, weirdly, because they're like, they need their children to see Father Christmas when they're five, six, and seven yeah. be- before <laughs> they might be changing their mind about the big man. And so they love that. They want that. And they need to do it in that short amount of time. And if you can find those businesses, that's why I've gone heavily into food services and providing food. You know, people love food, they want food, they need food, or they die. And we want to supply schools and colleges and, yeah, and it, you know, you've got to find those little niches. And this is the, the thing, you know, so you don't leave this conversation deflated, I think, you know, and Jim's still doing this proactively now. You know, he runs a very good business, but he's still looking for the, effectively, you're always in that cycle of the four companies, aren't you? So what I'd be looking for in your instance, Joe, potentially is that you, you don't get rid of the clients you've got at the moment. You know, definitely not. But you look at like, of the services that you do, and I can see, you know, from the website that it is, you know, Google Ads, graphics design, merchandise, review optimization, SEO, social media advertising. There'll be something in there that is your real key specialism. And whilst you're still serving the broad market, I'd also be looking at niching down, going that inch wide and a mile deep and doubling down on maybe it is photography or videography. One of the things you do amazingly well at and then, you know, starting to focus a bit more of that, your own marketing efforts focus on that. And then your price point of that, as you get more success for people, because you're only as good as the results you help people get, your price point increases for that service, at which point you're starting to bring more people in. And then you've got a decision. You can either, you know, just do that one thing uh, and take a step back from the more broad marketing 
or you you carry on the way that you're going really but it's yeah i wouldn't want you to leave this going oh well, should i just shut up shop then and just Niche go down, down one is, area look there, there, there is riches and niches absolutely and if you look at you know we always talk about this on the pod that in 1994 amazon just sold books and then they broadened out to mm. everything over a period of time but in a niche you can build real competitive advantage over everyone and then broaden out over time um, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, yeah. yeah go on. Okay. sorry joe no no i mean i was gonna say you know i'm, I'm not not this not, it's not deflated at all i think it's you know i've learned this from working with other businesses in terms of what it is we're doing you know i think that i always use the analogy of sometimes when you're a little kid and you look at your parents and you think wow they know everything and they they never they're not stressed and they're perfect and then you grow up and you realize that they're just a person they're just a normal person and i think i would i did the same thing looking at businesses from when i was first starting looking at a business that was much bigger than mine and going wow you know they must have it all sorted out and it's all perfect and they don't and i'm learning that now with my own business is like everything changes all the time and it's never done it's never complete so yeah i'm not, not debated by it it just means that i've got stuff to think about right yeah more debates with yourself um <laughs> you've got some, i've got enough of those uh, so we have um some questions jb jb's gonna read them out i think that's our new format and then you just sure. uh, um give us where you think you're out context to it. yeah so just put the timer on jb i'd love to know where we're at the timer there we go oh we're we've We've cracked on, haven't we? Yeah. We have cracked on. <laughs> uh, right, you uh, got the opportunity to ask a few different questions, a few killer questions to Jimbo. Uh, question number one was, do you feel there's enough education in schools currently surrounding the entrepreneurial spirit and that is, in fact, uh, an option for their future? Do you think there's enough talked about in schools? Um, to a degree, yeah. I think kids want to be entrepreneurs and if you if you want to be an entrepreneur, you'll find the way forward. But my, my concern is the government does not grease the wheels for entrepreneurship. No. We, we have loads of schools reach out to us now saying, James, can you come in and talk at the schools? I've done videos for schools. God, yeah, loads of this now going <laughs> to come in, isn't it? I've yeah. sent books to schools. I've spoken to schools. You know, that I think schools are, you know, if they see an entrepreneurial kid, especially a kid that's struggling, I'm, I'm sticking up for teachers now because they reach out to me and say, look, we've got every single month, week, we have kids say, look, we've got this kid that they should just be an entrepreneur they, mm. they're just not right for school and schools are recognizing that now yeah and and you know 35 percent of self-made millionaires in this country are dyslexic or i think uh, it's a all, staggering figure yeah, isn't it 40 percent of entrepreneurs have adhd like it is being recognized the problem i have is i think government certainly the uk government definitely want to support entrepreneurship I can't believe it. I think education is ahead of government here. Mm. And if kids are naughty in school, but they show us, sh- um, is it pension? Is it like pushant. a, a pushant, pushant for business and entrepreneurship? Yeah. I think schools are quite supportive of it and um, are opening their mind to it. We had um, a whole year group come to Roller City. They could do this Roller City thing. And then they had lessons around the profitability of Roller City. Oh, oh really? That's great. Oh, that's you know, cool, isn't it? You know, yeah. yeah. Big up the education system yeah. there. But then, you know, we've got budget tomorrow. At the time we're recording this, we're doing it day before budget. And I'm just like, what are they going to do for mm. SMEs that want to take the next risk? You know, why has Joe, our guest today, not employed all his people? Why has he got someone, um, you know, um, a self employed basis? It's probably because he's worried about the cost of employment, as am I all the bloody time. Mm-hmm. You know, the risk of. <laughs> Having people on constant payroll um, is not for the faint-hearted, and I think government should be supporting. Why have we only got five thousand individuals controlling most of the workforce? Because it's bloody hard. And so, so yeah, in answer to it, I think if you really try for it in education and you really want to be an entrepreneur, I think there are some great people in education that will help you. I was just leaving that as a it's standalone soundbite. Stevie's going to turn that into a, to a viral clip. I can see that stunk of a viral clip to me. I don't, I don't think it's perfect, but um, I think it's better than the government. Right, what's the next one? Uh, right, we've got time for just one more. So do you re- do you remember the questions that you submitted to us, Joe, or would you I've, like I've, to... I've, I've got them in front of me. So, Go on, pick, yeah. pick, your, pick your one fave, because we've got to wrap up shortly. So what's your, what's your, your top question? If you could only pick um, the brain of a... All right, I, I, I'll ask the second one because I literally asked this in a, in a meeting uh, with somebody earlier. So for you personally, what would allure you into chatting with a business like us, not through recommendation? So t- to give you context of that, the, the person I spoke to said time. Time is the reason. He doesn't have the time to worry about his social media and his Google and his website and so on. And he needs somebody to take the brain space for that. That was his reason that he gave. 
So I'm kind of posing to you, what would be the reason that would allure you into actually wanting to speak to somebody like myself or how, what, so how would you get a meeting with me? Correct. So, give you yeah. a, so Correct. I would want, I would use direct mail, lumpy mail. I'd send something in the post to me with a handwritten envelope or a handwritten box that always gets on my desk. I miss emails. I miss WhatsApps. I miss Instagram messages. I miss LinkedIn messages. Most of the time I don't answer all them. Now my team are doing it. So that stuff just gets gone. If you find out what influx I'm, of posts coming, <laughs> coming yeah, to yeah. Rossi HQ now. <laughs> if people really found out what I loved and what I liked and sent me something in the post. So people used to, I mean, I'm a big fan of Yorkshire Gold Tea. And that's right, yeah. yeah and a lot of people it's got me blue to, milk. People used to, yeah, yeah. And people know, used they, to yeah. send me a box of Yorkshire Gold Tea and say, can I have a cup of tea with you? I loved all that, you know. Um, <laughs> and they would get me to think, I mean, I don't, I get so much of that stuff now that, but it definitely still gets on my desk and I open it and I, I think about it for a few minutes. They get a few minutes of my brain space in a very active space. So lumpy mouth, I still think is one of the most underutilized methods of getting through to the right people. Then, you know, you're a marketeer, like the number one rule for marketeers should be risk reversal. So they've got people interested in your product because they've got a good, strong headline and good offer. Um, you know, what, what's the risk of me using you and how are you going to reverse the risk? Money back guarantee. Let me do it for free for you. People don't expect free forever. They expect discounts forever. Um, and show to them, look, we'll just do this for you. And if we get results, will you pay us? And that's yeah. the sort of things that I will. I mean, I still do that to this day. I say to people like a Rossi customer, look, have some free ice cream. Let's give us a try. Look, I'll give you five hundred pounds worth of stock for free. Or if it, look, just try our teddy bears in your holiday park. I'm going to send you a pallet worth of gear. You can convert it into cash and keep all the money. What? Because I'm thinking about lifetime value. Mm. If that person buys teddy bears off of me for the next twenty years, look how much money we're going to make. If they're going to buy ice cream off of me for the next twenty years, um, so you know, think about that's what these these KPI rules: average order value, average transactional value, average lifetime value. If you know the lifetime value of a customer, how much can you spend to get a customer? And really, that average order value, average transactional value, and average lifetime value is the foundations of marketing. Yeah, funnily enough, you're not the, you're not the first person because I've asked that question to a number of people, and you're not the first person who said about a handwritten letter which is funny isn't it because it kind of goes back to the old times where everything i'm doing is online but maybe maybe that is the way i, I and i think it's quite a good idea because i would i would pay attention more to that than i would of course you would, of course you would. right so someone, sends sense, you, yeah. someone sends you a card a handwritten card in the post do you remember it i don't yeah. i'd done a talk for someone a few months ago andrew just he's the most amazing person he just sent me a card afterwards saying thank you for doing an amazing talk uh, i just so special you, you, know, that, yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. not an email he didn't send me a th everyone sends a text thanks for doing that today i mean yes do that at least but actually it's so much better if you pick up the phone and say thank you for today and, mm. and put the effort into the voice call but if you actually send something in the post wow people just love it yeah all right perfect sounds like you've got lots of food for thought joe and um, yeah wish you well on your ventures so you can sort of focus on that side hustle sort of secondary thing that you're more enthused about doing um if people are looking for they're a small business owner if they want to um demand the earth they want the moon on a stick and they want an agency who can do it all for them where should they come to <laughs> so i mean maybe, maybe that's probably not the best thing to say however you know i, I would say look, look, you know if you're a small business small to medium-sized business who knows marketing is important but hasn't got around to doing it has multiple different people doing it, has somebody internally who's dabbling with this, that, or the other, and you know that's not the way to do it, then let's have a chat because we can make a plan out for you. There you go. Joe, you're amazing. Thanks for being on the show. Cool. Thank you. No, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate the opportunity. Awesome stuff. There you go. There's Joe. Another, uh, yeah, Ag agency. The agency game is tough, isn't it? Yeah. That agency game is tough. Very tough. Very low barrier to entry. Oh, we haven't done our eight traits of the greats. No, I, 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 try, I remember. <laughs> yeah, fine. You're right. just going to move on, weren't you? I was, yeah. Let's score our duo. Joe, if you're, he's gone, has he? No, he's, he's sat in the background still. Joe, just so, just so you know, we score all of our guests now, and we call this sure. eight traits of the greats quiz. Yeah. It's not really a quiz, because we know. Well, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give it quiz music. You ready? Come on. 
<laughs> okay, so let's score him. Eight trades to the I great. Can in, can I? I can't get in the flipping book, though. It's so Just secure. Use the pen. I don't um, want to damage the pen. Number one, start him with the end in mind. Does he do that? I don't think he does. No. He might do it after our conversation. Semi no. starting with the end no, in mind. No. No. Passionate about their calls. Is oh, he passionate about marketing? He's passionate about a cause. I think the marketing is the, the route to get in there. So, okay, yeah, we'll I'll give him that. that one. Untold amounts of resilience. He's definitely got that. We'll yeah. give him that. Uh, they master relationships with people. I think he's. I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice, nice guy. Three. Uh, commercial awareness. No, we're not having that. He's not even reducing the monthly profit and loss. I mean. Absolutely bloody not. Number six, they <laughs> innovate so they don't evaporate. I think he's preferred to innovate. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Should we give him that? Yeah. Master marketeer. You want to hope so, didn't you? Mm. But ironically, yeah. Maybe not. I'll go and let him have it. Okay. Uh, they stay teachable and curious. Yeah, I think he, yeah, can, definitely. he can get that. So I think three no's and. Three no's and five yeses. Yeah. I wish we chose ten eight yeah, trades because be then we could just do percentage, percentage so easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, he's he, done all right. We could just say instead of a percentage, he's just he's just done all right. He got he's not a thumbs up. Three. He's not a thumbs down. He's a he's a thumb in the middle. <laughs> what we could do? One, two, three, oh, four, five, six. He can be a tra of the greats. <laughs> eight tras. He's got eight tras of the greats. We just need to get the eights on. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Well, there you go. Fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast. If you were screaming along at home going, I've got the answers. I know how to solve this guy's problems. Stick them in the comments in YouTube. It's a very, very proactive entrepreneurial community over on YouTube, which is great because there's actually rather than most YouTube channels to be honest, like, oh, I don't like this. Oh, this is rubbish. But these, but the comments that you guys are leaving in YouTube is actually really useful. Yeah. And if you are watching on YouTube, please oh, let go. me know here we go. what eyes. you think of JB shirt. What's wrong with this shirt? Well, it looks like you're comfortably moving into middle age. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm comfortable with, with who I am. Hey, if you do want to come and watch this podcast live, yep. though, you should definitely come and see us uh, at the Leicester Square Theatre. I'll tell you what, um, here's, here's my pal, James Sinclair, to tell you more. Quick inverted sales pitch, go. So, ladies and gents, we are coming to the Leicester Square Theatre in London. Leicester Square Theatre, 10th of June. Tickets are £32. I can't believe it's that cheap, Jimbo. Absolute what, The bargain. gift that keeps on giving. We are going to have an evening with James Sinclair, James Ware, and all my team will be there. And uh, hopefully we fill this theatre up. Fingers crossed, or it's going to be very embarrassing. Nah, we have a significant egg on our face. I think we've already got 70 tickets gone. So Have we? Well, yeah, because um, all of our exec and EU members are coming and we've got some guests. And we've sold quite a few tickets. So get on there before they sell out at jamesinclair.net um, or just type in James Sinclair Leicester Square Theatre. Uh, and there's a picture of me and you up there as well. <laughs> it's very James Sinclair and no JB, but I suppose it is. It's James podcast. Sinclair's podcast, yeah. isn't it? I'm just, I'm just Where would you be man. without me? Well, who knows? Still in the doldrums looking for no, there you podcast go. greatness. There you go. Well, if you would like to come along, then click the link in the show notes or make sure it's in the show notes and the description and all that kind of stuff. Absolute bargain, isn't it? It is a bargain. Months. If you are loving this podcast and you would like to come on the podcast, it's absolutely free to do. You can apply on my website, jamesinclair.net. There's an application form uh, and we'll try our very best to get you on to grow your business. Only come on if you want to grow your business. I had somebody reach out to me about coming on. He said, do you think it's a good idea? I said, categorically, it's not a good idea because I know you're coming on to do a sales pitch and you are going to get absolutely rinsed. And yeah. he cancelled. So yeah. <laughs> at least he took the advice. Yeah, well, if people come, if we have that, we just don't put it out. No, anyway. fair enough. So there we you want go. people, look, 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 you are going to get your business exposed to tens of thousands of people um, that will listen to this podcast over a period of time. Well, 100,000 plus people mm. uh, once it's been out for a while. Um, and, and we want you to get business from it, but we don't want it to be coming on to just Sales say how great bitch. you are. We want you to be challenged and genuinely want to hear ways around those challenges. And yeah, you know, that's good. There you go. Awesome. Well, we will see you in the next episode. If you uh, have enjoyed, click like. Muchas five stars and gracias. Right well, wow, that was very international, wasn't it? There yeah. you go. For all of our Spanish fans. There if you're go. in Spain and you want to come to Leicester Square Theatre, just get yourself on a plane to City Airport. Yeah. Maybe we do so well one day we'll do the podcast live in Madrid. Well, let's not let's <laughs> not run before we can walk, shall we? Right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> see ya.